Hi, good afternoon. My name is Harrington Boatko. We're here now at the Lyceum, Phili uh, University, uh, Lyceum Philippines University, the Lyceum of the Philippines University, because first it was Lyceum Philippines, and then next the, univer uh, the university, being uh, an autonomy now, an autonomous. Now, what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, while you're watching, is the school, the management in the school, the administration has decided to keep everybody current by way of what they have, their monthly events where a forum is put together, where the staff together, the faculty and, and the students, the juniors and seniors who are graduating together, the management staff get together and discuss current events. That's exactly what's going to happen here. They've been doing it all year. And GNN has come in to try and bring this to you, the more intellectual discussions about the current events. Now, Beside me, you know him, um, he's no stranger, Gil Santos, who also hosts with us. We have the president to my left, Mr. Bobby Laurel, and you know, uh, Ambassador uh, Ray Alcilias, who is the Dean for International Studies here in the school. Um, I'll pass it on to you, Gil. Okay, yeah. What we're going to do is a three-stage discussion. The first one is we're going, to, all the, on, on the background actually is the new government. We have a new president. So uh, we can analyze what he said first on his inaugural, then his first week, week of uh, accomplishments, and then the last part of it should be what is doable? Where is this country going? What do we have in mind? What are we suggesting the government should do? After all, you are part of the sovereign uh, citizen. We are all voters. You see? So we should exercise this, and because of the present tendencies in, after the first week, you know, we've seen it, all the citizens must now be alert. And there's nothing wrong in the market of free ideas in our democratic space to do this exercise. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a free discussion. You can butt in any time. We don't have to recognize the, uh, <coughs> the speaker. And uh, we're going to be very, very civilized about this. And we're going to have, I'm sure, we're going to have for the next uh, 40, to one hour, 40 minutes to one hour, a very healthy discussion. Okay, let me start off by <clears throat> asking anyone who can answer, what did you think of the inaugural speech of the president? One, 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 one. <laughs> <laughs> That's oversimplifying. One, one, one <laughs> is uh, something, but, you know, seriously speaking. What did you think of it? What did you perceive? And what did you believe she would be going? Anyone starts? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I thought that the speech was better than I expected. You see, uh, I am not really a supporter of President Aquino, but the speech made me think twice about how I would perceive him, and I think that he addressed some good issues, particularly how he's going to treat the, the former president, uh, President Arroyo, how he's going to investigate all the anomalies conducted, and then uh, how he will address the corruption issue, and of course, even the Wang Wang is something I see as a positive development. Is this something not, that didn't come out just because you were tired of uh, nine years of Gloria Arroyo, and you were Ha, relieved that uh, uh, Aquino is going to treat Arroyo this way, you know? No, 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 no sir, not, not oh, at all. Okay. Uh. Anybody wants? Go ahead. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I thought there was really nothing in the way that we should have been impressed with that inaugural address. Why, first of all? Um, it's the usual motherhood statements. Anyone can make motherhood statements. I've heard motherhood statements all my life. Um, the important thing in the Philippines right now is what is his government's legislative agenda? The same thing you hear in other countries when they make inaugural addresses is they outline clearly from the start what laws do they intend to push before Congress? What, do they, what are their priorities? Just like, for example, in the case of Barack Obama, it is very clear from the start that he was going to push universal health care. That was at the very top of his agenda. That defined 
the early portion of his administration. Yeah, let that me, he was let, put, me yes. let me cut cut in, uh, Dave. Shouldn't that be on the sauna, on the inaugural, on the uh, first address to Congress on July 24th? Well, not necessarily, uh, Gil, because remember his his group had time to formulate policy and and priorities during the time that they were prepared, but I don't think. Uh, it is appropriate, for example, to say the same old motherhood statements all over and over again. We know what the problems are in our country. Mm -hmm. Secondly, secondly, I found it a little funny, quite honestly, that they would give too much play to this siren issue. To me, that for me, more than anything else, was simply a PR stunt. I mean, I'm sorry. I, 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 I've been around the block way too many times, I think, uh, uh, to, to be fooled by something like that. Okay? Admittedly, that's an oversimplification, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know it's an oversimplification. However, however, we, we, we also saw in the first two, three days how that issue right away generated a flip-flop. Okay, why do I say a flip-flop? The first day he says, uh, well, I will not be using siren. The second day, here comes the spokesman saying, well, he might be needing a siren because of security reasons. And then it just goes back and forth, flip-flop, flip-flop, you know what I mean? So, wait a minute. I mean, either you're, you're, you're decided about it or you're not. But you're sending out mixed signals in your first two, three days in office. That doesn't sound very good. It doesn't send a very clear message to, to, to your people. Okay. Uh, in no defense to... Um to President Noinoy. I think the one that was ready for the presidency was really Vice President Marr together with the Liberal Party because they were poised to take over with the leadership. The yellow magic after the, the death or the demise of the mother brought about a new opportunity, which caught everybody, I think, flat-footed, which is why maybe even the the cabinet now where you have the three strong groups, you know, based on what we read in the newspaper, right? You have, of course, the strongest, the Kamagana kings, right, in the, the ears. You've got the liberal parties trying to maintain their stability. And you've got, of course, the black and white who's already set put. Now, the president is going to have to play among all the three. Um, it seems to me sometimes it's like electioneering when it's already he's won the presidency. Maybe this is why you have the yellow ribbons on all the cars. Maybe he still thinks it's still the election and those people that have those yellow ribbons. It's already, we've already won, he's already won the presidency in spite of the electoral protests. Yeah, yeah. Somebody has to remind him. Somebody has to remind him the election is over, the campaign is over. Yeah. But what is it now? That's why that question is very nice. We have to live with the current but it's your future. So uh, if you enjoy and you like exactly what he's doing, then I guess um, we're one step there, if that is what it is. Uh, the sauna, you're right. The sauna is supposed to be the address that's on July 26. It's supposed to be the address to the legislation on what the executive agenda is supposed to be other than the budget. That is supposed to be a direct uh, presentation to the Congress. That's when we find out exactly, but on the legislative side. I think the inauguration was supposed to generate, let's see, what did Estrada say when he won? Walang, walang kamag-anak. Walang kamag-anak. Walang kaibigan. Uh, Hoodloom in robes. Uh, GMA, ano sinabi ni GMA? Kanya-kanya yan eh, pero ano sinabi ni Noy Noy? Yun ang problema eh. Ano sinabi ni Noy Noy? Kasi... Walang, kung walang, uh, walang mahirap, kung walang korap. So that was taken to mean to be oh, simplified. And, and for the ordinary man on the street, which is 70-75% 70, 70, of our total population, that means job for everybody, food for every family table, you know, and no poverty. That is over. That cannot be done in six years. That's true. You know, that's. No, 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 that's no, no power. <laughs> What's wrong with the yellow fever? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, but that is, those are the realities, the hard facts of life. So if we expect or uh, no, no, to do miracles, uh, I think we have something else coming. What do you think, Bobby? Well, certainly, I agree that uh, we will not have miracles. But uh, let me just go back to uh, what David and I said, that they were motherhood statements. And 
for me, I think it's understandable why you